The Environment Agency Abu Dhabi, CMS Secretariat Total and Total Abu Bukhush is delighted to launch Dugong Seagrass Communities e-research toolkit. Developed by international experts, the toolkit will be used in over 40 countries for dugongs, seagrass and communities conservation. Let's all save the dugongs. Dugongs by their nature are lovable creatures. As you can see the size, the look, the way they would live in the community, they are all give you a sentiment that you are like a human being in other words. So you can't hate them really, you have to love them. Well dugongs are amazing animals. They're the only herbivorous, i.e. plant-eating animal that's strictly marine. Dugongs are very significant culturally to people living in 27 countries ranging from East Africa to the Solomon Islands. We often call them the gardeners of the sea. They feed on seagrass, they maintain um, seagrass meadows, they move from one meadow to another. Generally dugongs come for a breath every six to eight minutes. They eat a lot of seagrass, up to 40 kilograms per day per animal. Seagrass are an incredibly amazing part of the marine environment. They are flowering marine plants which live on the seabed and they play an enormous amount of roles both to the ecosystem in the marine environment and also to the benefits to humans. So the main threats to dugongs are direct take, hunting, indirect take, bycatch, incidental catch of dugongs in fishing nets, um, collision with boats in some areas with high um, boat traffic, um, and also, of course, the disturbance of their habitat, the seagrass habitats. Once you've identified the threats to dugongs and the threats to seagrasses, you need to understand the human activities that might be leading to those threats. Communities are the, the human groups that are acting in a way that threatens dugongs or seagrasses. And, um, we need to consider their activities, their priorities, their needs when we're designing conservation, um, both for practical purposes. Um, conservation generally succeeds more when communities are uh, on board and when they support it, and also for ethical reasons. So if we're trying to change these activities that threaten dugongs and seagrasses, we will likely be changing people's livelihoods. Uh, so we need to make sure that their rights uh, and their quality of life it isn't harmed by these conservation activities. We're not really managing the dugongs or the seagrass. We are managing people's behaviour and the impacts that they bring on it, either directly or indirectly. So dugongs are spread across the Indo-Pacific, from, you know, from uh, East Africa all the way up through South Asia, down through Southeast Asia, out into the Pacific. And you've got researchers and conservationists stationed in all of these countries trying to do great things for conservation of dugongs and seagrasses but might not have access to the latest libraries or the latest tools or the latest knowledge and by having a web-based tool like the e-resource kit allows anybody that's involved in dugong and seagrass conservation to go online and at their fingertips have some of the solutions they need. This is an important um toolkit because it allows um, focal points and those working within the countries uh, on dugongs to be able to have a resource at their instant disposal to be able to get the information they need for their own protection at the national level. So it's a toolkit whereby you can input data, you can put input uh, data from the country, um, and you can ask it questions and it will give you back uh, advice in terms of policy directions or on basic information in terms of dugong conservation. So it's one of the resources that I think and uh, many of us here uh, within the Secretary believe will be very, very useful for, um, for countries and, and in terms of building up their capacity within, within the dugong range states. It's a way of taking knowledge that exists, tools that exist, and making them available to people. And a lot of people just start out with, oh, you know, I, I need to learn something about dugongs, but I don't, don't quite know how to do it. And so here you have a method. But one of the challenges is people very often pick the method or the tool long before they've thought of the research question that they had. You know, I, I, I need to use a drone, or I'm going to use uh, aerial surveys. And those might not necessarily have been the tools to use to solve the knowledge need that existed. The e-resource kit 
basically guides the user through a process of selecting the question, refining the question, and, and really putting it into context and then saying, Look, these are the best methods available to you. And, and that's something that never existed before. People just had this big, huge internet to search, or books, or papers, and everything. And the e-resource kit just brings it all together and, and puts it all in one place for someone. So it can really guide users into using the right tools to answer their questions in the most efficient manner, saving money, uh, saving their own time, saving resources, and getting the job done. It's important when people study the marine environment that they use the, the methods that are appropriate and necessary to answer solid research or monitoring questions. By an asking the user to ask questions they can about what they want to know about the seagrass or the dugongs or the communities, then they can actually find the appropriate method for answering that question. One of the key advantages of the toolkit is it provides an easily accessible portal. So this is a bit of like, in some, some respects, a one-stop shop where people can then go and find information which experts from all around the world have contributed to, to best inform and guide people in their, time, in their terms of methods. So it's, it's also a live toolkit, so it's something that's not static. What I mean is that through time, as technologies improve, as information improves, that toolkit can then evolve to best advise people with with the new sorts of uh, methods and techniques that, that come along. There was a high demand around the world um, uh, from resource managers and dugong and seagrass researchers to find a method that would be comparable um, around the world to look at the status of dugongs and seagrasses. Unfortunately, there is no one method that, that fits all countries and, and research questions. There are many research questions and many methods that can answer these questions. So the goal of the toolkit that we have designed is to challenge the, the users to think of the research question, think of what is it that you want to know and then what are your constraints, how much money do you have to run your project, what is your time frame and given all this information, the toolkit helps users to, de to determine which methodology would be the most appropriate to use in their country or area of interest. So once you've been able to answer that question most appropriately, the methods show you how to do that. It provides you and guides you with the type of best instruments and tools to do that, the most cost-effective way to do that. And the end result is we get a better understanding of where our seagrasses are, how they're going, if we're losing them, uh, and that sort of information can certainly guide us in terms of conservation. So this is, these are a lot of questions, a lot of topics, and they cover a, a very broad set of themes, but um, for designing, again, well thought out and sustainable conservation, these are all things we need to consider. So it's not just about looking at the animal and the plants, it's about the people who may cause damage to those uh, animals and plants. Our real hope with the toolkit is to provide a very integrated, holistic look at how you would design a dugong and seagrass and communities uh, conservation research project. Uh, these are often thought of as, as separate units, but they really do need to be uh, integrated together in a very kind of um, dynamic way. You need to adapt your questions to your system and certain things you learn about dugongs and seagrass will influence what you want to ask the communities and certain things you learn about the communities might bring up additional questions that you need to answer about dugongs and seagrass for example. Um, this kind of research has to work hand in hand and I think the real value added of this toolkit is that we present it that way and uh, I hope it's a useful way for people to uh, go through, even if they're not using it in a very um, in-depth manner, even just clicking through and seeing some of the key questions we have listed there, uh, hopefully will bring up some ideas, or spark some really good ideas about how to study the system, because it really is a system that is incredibly important when we're talking about conservation, especially of a species and ecosystem that are so tightly linked to human livelihoods and well-being. By designing and building the e-resource kit, We've been able to get um, all those methods together 
into one, one website. We always wanted to start uh, getting more information about the dugongs and there are, is a right way and a wrong way how you can go about it. So we really hope to get the guidance with the toolkit to ask the right question and especially and even more so to follow the right methodologies. Vanuatu is a least developing country and we don't have a lot of conservation dollars coming into our country. So this toolkit is going to really help us to make the most efficient use of the dollars that come in to us. When I go back to Mozambique, I uh, will disseminate the res this uh, e-resource toolkit to students and, and conservationists uh, because it, it's a good way to, to refine projects and, 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 and program proposals. When we, we go back to Kenya, the research resource toolkit that uh, has just been uh, shown to us today will be very useful for us because we are involved in the conservation of endangered species such as dugong, turtles and sharks and other important species in the marine environment. So it's going to be very useful uh, to us in trying to understand the distribution of the species and to understand also the major threats and possibly come up with uh, mitigation measures. When we talk of scientists within Kenya who can use this tool, uh, you are looking at a very big number of professional scientists who are dealing with the marine environment. So it's going to be quite a number of people who will benefit from this toolkit. When I go, go to Thailand, the sea grass and dugong toolkit will be very beneficial for community, for conservation, dugong and sea grass. I feel it's going to be really, really helpful for us for our marine projects, not only on dugongs and seagrasses, but also on marine turtles and whale sharks and many other species will get benefited by that. And hopefully that will strengthen our work in the conservation of dugongs, turtles and the marine environment of the Arabian Gulf.